Howdy everybody and welcome to another video with me. I'm Nick and this is London Creative. Look, logos everywhere. So, we've done camera hacks. How to use the camera watts, ISO and apertures and frame rates and shutter speeds, etc. And we've done lighting, making this and how to fill light up and make everything all pretty and glowy. Now, we come to the fun bit. It's 15 different types of rules or ways of taking photos that should help you get out there and do it. So, you've got your camera, you've got your set up, you know how to use it, and now you just need to go and take some photos. And you can just take a photo like this and be like, hmm, boring. Or you could just do this and be slightly offset and make it interesting. That is the rule of thirds. You can go into your phone, go into the settings and click grid. And you'll get a line that goes there, there, there and there and looks like tic-tac-toe or noughts and crosses grid and the trick is is you position your subjects exactly where the crosses are so here 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 or here because i'm watching it on myself on the grid so if i stand like this i'm here i'm the center of your attention and you'll see this a lot on the news the news presenter never sits like this they sit here they sit slightly offset and then you have the graphics and whatever come up here. But this is the rule of thirds. Segregate the picture into thirds and thirds, position your subject, and you end up with pictures that are more interesting and more pleasing to the eye. This is called Freaky Levers. It was, a, this was one of my business cards years ago. And this is the perfect example of a rule of thirds. Try and fill the frame. Try it. all of these. Go out, try them, then post them and do, I should make it. LC 15 rule photo rules. LC 15 photo rules. That. Hashtag it on Instagram. Show me your pictures. I'll get to see them. So that's your, your rule of thirds. But there's a variance. The golden ratio. The golden ratio takes that center point and pushes it in just a little bit so that I would be here. It's a variant and there, everything has a rule and a rule must always have an excuse or an exception. The golden ratio basically takes this grid and shrinks it, brings everything in slightly closer to the center. Personally, it's not one I've used too much with, again, certain exceptions. But then there's also the golden triangle. This basically takes the same idea and splits it, taking the same points, putting your subject's eye or hand in certain points. So you'd end up with a hand here and a hand here. It'd be, it'd be interesting. Another variant is Fibonacci spiral, the never-ending spiral that goes in and then it's slightly offset. And that works as well. Position your subject. So you end up setting the subject to hit the sweet spot, the centre of the golden spiral. Next up is one that I didn't even know existed till I did my teaching diploma and one of the other students was a photographer and he lived by the, the three shapes rule. It's basically in every picture there is a triangle, a circle and a square. So if I stand like this, there's a square, there's a circle, you've got a triangle at the top there, see? It's, a, it's one of those you can see it if you want to. You get a lot of it in like Renaissance Arts, a lot of finding the shapes and using those shapes to make a picture. Try to see a triangle, a square and a circle and make a composition using those shapes. Make sense? You've got your rule of thirds, you've got your golden ratio and your spiral, your triangle and whatever. But you can also kind of, this is where you cheat and you break the rule. You use a negative space. You do this. You, you set, set your subjects down and you have this space up here. It can work. It's, it depends on what's in the rest of the picture. If you have something like this with subjects in the corner in this massive bright orange wall, it's impressive, it can work. It can also look rubbish. It's a case of try it and see what you come up with. Next one is an interesting one. And it's one that's quite clever. The rule of leading lines. Basically, this line here, this line of pictures, I'm trying to do it because I'm doing it in negative. This line of pictures that's coming along here is leading your eye in to me. Now, if you're Arabic or Middle Eastern or of a culture where you've grown up and you've learned to write from right to left, your brain will automatically look that way. So I'd be better off over here and have the lines, have the picture back to front round another way. You'd feel this being much more comfortable and 
natural way. We do these rules for Western culture, but if you're used to things being the other way around, written the other way, your brain will automatically think the other way around. So leading lines basically means you find lines that lead you into the subject. You find structures or points or something, park benches with those runs leading down to a point, lines on a road. This example of a, a winding road is a leading line. Personally, I think there should have been somebody laying them in the road to draw your eye to the subject rather than just have the, the road. There are never ending amounts of lines in things all over the place, all the time. You just gotta look for them. This is the rule for everything. You've gotta just look for it. Next up, symmetry. Symmetry is basically making both sides of the picture exactly the same, put your subject in the middle and make it perfect. Simple. That's a really easy one to do if you get it. If you see something like the Taj Mahal or something, everything is perfectly sym symmetrical. You just gotta look for it. There we go, like that. Reflections. That would be an interesting one. Use a mirror or something to reflect somebody back or take the, the reflection of something as the subject as the point of interest. Use that and end up with three eyes. Send help and find the camera. Absolutely filthy mirror. There we go. There we go. That's that's a perfect picture. Look at that. That could almost be a thumbnail. Reflections. Use reflections of something to tell the story. Frame of a shop window, bounce a light and you get somebody that's not even suspecting. Reflections are good for candid photos. Likewise, refraction. Both of these lend themselves to each other and shop windows and shooting through glass is a great way to do refraction because you're not just getting the reflection you're getting it going through and getting half and half images refraction is also the way that light bends as it goes through glass or water and so sometimes a stick will go in and be bent and so you end up with this weirdness of shapes breaks the rule a little bit breaks the what your brain is expecting kind of like doing the leading lines the wrong way around. Perfect example of refraction. See yourself in there? See me in there? That's refraction. The light has been bent. It's been twisted and warped. It's bulb. Now many people will say the most basic rule of photography is black and white is always better. It can be. I mean that very definitely worked better black and white because there was so much colour going on, especially with all the shops. If you know Camden at all, this is just illuminated with colour. Lots of colour, lots of stuff going on, detracted from the subject. Turn it black and white, make it very contrasty. You end up with a dramatic picture. But that guy standing against the orange wall, make him black and white and, and it's muddy and dull. It's nothing special. So sometimes colour works, sometimes it doesn't. As you can tell, I like colour, I like red and I like purple. I don't like green, I hate green. But there are times in a forest and it's vibrantly green, you want to show that off. You shoot that in black and white, it's going to look, hmm. Unless, of course, it's the light and you get the, the next one. Shadows. Use shadows to your advantage. Sometimes it's quite literally take a picture of a shadow on the floor. It's a perfect example of myself, Tora and Solar. It's us. You can tell it's us because the shapes. You can tell mostly because it, uh, there's a four-legged person standing in front of us. That's a shadow. The, these images of just shadows casting on the ground make for something really interesting. I hadn't noticed the shadow around me until now. Shadows are interesting, especially if it's very contrasty and it's very colourful and very bright on one side dark on the other. Contrasts help. Shadows can make interesting things. Put someone in front of a blind, you end up with lines across their face. Really dramatic, beautiful images. Or you can just take a photo of the shadow. Similarly, details. Take a photo of just a tiny part of somebody. A detail. The whole picture doesn't need to be there. You can zoom in on something. I once did a photo shoot with a family. We picked on one simple thing. Their hands. I had hands on railings, I had hands over faces. It became more iconic to see the picture of their hand than it did to see their face. Details can tell more than a whole scene. A picture of this rope being laid out by a climber is telling a lot. If you're a climber, it makes a lot of sense. You see someone be laying their rope out while someone high above is climbing and they're studying the concentrate. You can't see their face, you can't see anything, but you know that that person is standing there holding the rope looking up, watching their lead climber, and it's telling the story. Likewise, 
zoom in, fill the frame with fill the frame with one thing, get rid of all this negative space. Another one to do is to shoot through something. Put that up like that and shoot through that, it becomes interesting. A filter. Put that up like that and get that. There we go. Simple. Just look around, find stuff, shoot through it. It's kind of the voyeurity thing. Shooting through gaps in doors. That this is an example, another of mine. It's almost a secret. Most of the time when you're shooting through something, it's secretive or it's hidden. Shooting with the GoPro and putting it inside a coffee pot and then pouring on it gives you a unique point of view. Unique points of view is all that photography is about, really. Any more? It's 15. That's pretty much an entire portfolio there. This is your excuse. Go out and take one picture of each thing. So, picture of rule of thirds, golden ratio, where it's slightly smaller and the subject is much closer into the middle and you've got more space around the outside. Golden triangle, the line going down and intersecting. Golden ratio, the spiral that never ends. Uh, negative space, where you have this big space around somebody. Leading lines, your lines, things drawing your eye in. Try both versions. Try the Western version and the, I, I call it the Arabic version. Symmetry, same either side. Then reflection, using the mirror. Refraction, bending light, twisting, making it warped. Black and white, over color. Take a picture in color, turn it black and white, compare the two. You'll have to put both next to each other, see if you can make it better by being black and white or be better by being colour. I guess you'd have four pictures there because you'd have one where the colour works better than the black and white and one the other way around. Shadows. Shadows. Casting shadows across my face, making it contrasty and so forth. Details. A small piece, something's detailed about something and fill the frame. Shoot through. Shoot through. Like that. And I look forward to seeing your, your attempts. If you do, try this out and post them on Instagram with the, this hashtag and you can also find me on all social media follow the link you can also buy me um, a coffee if you want to see me do more of these videos and help fund me because I don't have enough subscribers to be you know in the partnership thing of YouTube I need more subscribers and I need you to give this a thumbs up if this is helpful leave me comments down below tell me any rules that you follow if you're already taking photos or what works, what doesn't, talk to me. Talking is good. Sharing is also good. If you think that somebody else would like this and somebody else wants to take photos, click it, click the share button, get the link, send it to them, or add it to your social media, or so forth. All these different things, all, all help. And of course, if you're not already, please subscribe. I don't seem to be growing. I've been doing this for over two years now and I still have not got any growth. And until next time, I guess, that's me, and I shall see you then. Bye. Hit record. Q man downstairs shouting in that um, I've now learned Amharic. I just need to know how to say shut up in Amharic because he does not. So you have shadows. Yeah, you look like got a shadow. Um, why have I got more shadow on one side than the other? There's a picture. Dog, totally confused. This light bulb is absolutely filthy. Yes. Oops, smash the light bulb.